And my belief is always that if you give people good information, then they can make good decisions uh, about how they want to vote. And that hopefully that just benefits everybody. I'm Jonathan Tamari. I'm the national political reporter for The Inquirer. It was incredible and it was rewarding. It was probably one of the most intense experiences of my career, um, you know, coming up close to 20 years now. One of the most intense and rewarding, you know, couple of months here at the end that, that I can ever remember. And I know firsthand because I used to cover New Jersey politics and New Jersey is very much not a battleground and there was never a tension like this. And so we knew that all the spotlight was going to be on us and we knew that people around the country were going to be looking to us to provide accurate information, to provide insight, to provide analysis. So it was really intense in, in a way that I've almost never experienced, uh, but also rewarding to have people coming to us for information, to have people interested in what we were working on, uh, you know, to feel like, you know, the spotlight was on you and it was your time to kind of show what you could do. So it was, it was really exciting. It was challenging, you know, not a lot of sleep those days. And we're here like maybe I think Two weeks later, I'm still not quite feeling 100% yet. It's something that I think I was aware of for a long time, but I had never had the time or, or kind of the vision to put it all together into one piece. We knew that Pennsylvania had all these very different parts to it. It's such a big, vast state with so many different facets. And, uh, and, and we knew that the suburbs are different than the rural areas are different from the cities. The eastern part of the state is different from the western part of the state. And you kind of know that intellectually, but until you put them all side by side, you don't necessarily see how those contrasts really drive people in different ways when it comes to politics, when it comes to policy, just when it comes to like their everyday culture, how they spend their time, where, what kind of jobs they go to. Uh, and I would start to get, when I was writing about polls, I would always get emails from people who would say, well, you know, this poll says so many people like Biden. I don't know anybody who likes Biden. Like everybody I know likes Trump. And I would think, well, depending on what part of the state you're in, that really may be true. Um, there are parts of the state that almost everybody did like Trump. Uh, but then I could take you to other parts of the state where only there's almost only Biden supporters. And it just made me think about how you have these different elements within the same state. Uh, and so I made the goal of, of traveling to different parts of it in order to kind of tell the story side by side, where usually we would say, all right, we'll do one story on the suburbs and we're gonna do one story on a rural area and one story on Philadelphia. But I thought putting them all in one story kind of would have a thread that links them together, even if they're split. We know that both candidates drew out incredible, um, incredible turnout uh, in the state. Um, just huge numbers voted for both people. So they both were able to get their kind of core supporters out. Um, the biggest difference from this year versus 2016 is that the suburbs uh, really went so strongly for, for Joe Biden. Um, I don't have the numbers directly in front of me, but he significantly increased Hillary Clinton's margins in the suburbs around Philadelphia, uh, in Allegheny County, which includes Pittsburgh, but also the suburbs around Pittsburgh. And that was a huge shift in, in the votes. Uh, to put it in perspective, he doubled the margin that Barack Obama got in the suburbs in 2012. So that's in two elections, doubling those numbers. And so even though Trump is also increasing his support in rural areas, there's more voters in the suburbs. And that increase was able to put Biden over the top. And he was able to keep pace with Trump in some of those rural areas where Trump's numbers went up and Biden's numbers went up by a similar amount. So he didn't kind of get, even though he was still losing, it wasn't losing as bad. And then he won the suburbs in huge, huge ways. Yeah, I think it, I think it's going to remain a battleground. There's a question of, you know, the coalitions are changing. Um, whereas at one point, a lot of those rural voters who lived in these post-industrial areas were still Democrats because their labor, they were tied to labor unions and labor unions generally support Democrats. And the suburbs tended to be a little bit more kind of moderate, but moderate conservative. They would vote Republican. And now those positions have changed where those rural areas are very strongly Republican. The suburbs have moved very strongly Democratic. And I think we have to see now 
if President Trump, if that was just a, a, a shift related to President Trump, if there's a different Republican running, do people kind of go back to their previous positions or are those changes cemented and does the state kind of stay so evenly balanced? So I think for sure it's gonna be a battleground because we just don't know how these coalitions are going to react when there's different candidates on the ballot. Uh, but you know, it's so close that we know both parties are gonna contest it very strongly. We know in 2022, there's a governor's race and a Senate race and that those will be very hotly contested by both sides. So that'll give us our first clue about kind of where things are headed, I think.